The European Commission has unveiled a list of four sensitive technology areas to de-risk its relationship with China and other authoritarian regimes. Cutting-edge microchips, AI-powered systems, quantum computing and genetic engineering will be put under the microscope to determine whether their exports and imports represent a danger to the security of the European Union as a whole. The EU has become wary of its dependence on partners like Russia and China ever since the COVID-19 pandemic disrupted supply chains and the war in Ukraine led to an energy crisis. For more on this, let's bring in DW Taipei Bureau Chief Tso Tsang Han. So the EU says that this risk assessment will be country agnostic. But of course, the question on many people's minds is how much of this initiative is targeting China specifically? Well, everyone knows that the biggest potential target is China, and this is part of the EU's economic security strategy. Senior officials from EU have repeatedly named China directly uh, when discussing economic risks. But at the official press conference and the background briefing on the list of key technologies, they try to avoid such targeting. A number of journalists there ask questions center on the China factor, and uh, one technology official um, responded by saying that geopolitical risks will certainly be taken into account in presenting the list, but that individual countries will not be named in order to maintain the integrity of the policy's coverage. Apparently, China has become he who must not be named or you know who that the European Union does not want to say out loud. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, export controls uh, could be uh, uh, one measure that the, that the EU could in, put in place here. But the question is, how much pressure can the EU really put on China here? Well, not much. As we all know, like China has advanced uh, technologies on these four areas. Mainly Beijing is looking at the attitude of EU because we know um, for um, uh, Ursula von der Leyen, he, she said like a month ago, like all these um, strategies are focusing on, um, on, the, on the point that they don't want to be able to give Beijing the ability to enhance its military technology when it comes to a possible war happening in this region, uh, especially with Taiwan, as we all know. So not much real pressure, but it's the attitude and the EU stance in the future that Beijing is watching closely. Uh, Taiwan, you mentioned it, Taiwan is also involved here. Um, how would the EU respond to the geopolitical risks of its dependence on Taiwan for semiconductors? Well, the official replied that the key technology policy does not target any continent, country, or anything of that sort. And that, um, of course, um, European chips are very dependent on this part of the world, not just Taiwan, but also South Korea, which is why EU has proposed that um, the EU Chip Act which seeks to restore Europe's chip manufacturing power. And again, a reporter in that audience um, asked how much China, the elephant in the room, would affect EU policy. The official emphasized that the policy was not designed for China, but that the EU seeks the risk of too much uh, dependence on foreign countries for key technology and therefore it does what they need to do. Now, on the same day that the list of key technologies was released, the EU Parliament passed the anti-coercion instrument legislation. Tell us more about that. Well, this is also part of the uh, EU's economic security framework and which originated from China's trade coercion against Lithuania. Um, this legislation is an attempt to integrate the relevant policies already proposed and planned into this framework and indicating that the risk assessment will be made in four areas, um, mainly supply chain resilience, critical raw materials, uh, security and leakage of technology, and the risk of economic dependence or um, what they say, weaponization of economic coercion. So still, China is the main target that the EU cannot avoid. But at the same time, it is difficult for the EU to give up the interests of economic and trade transactions with China, we, we know. So we still have to see how the EU balance the two in their following moves. DW Taipei Bureau Chief Tso Tsang Han Tso, thank you.